All right, number 66 is an important problem. So the question is asking us for the name. <coughs> the question is asking us for the IUPAC name for this compound. Mm -hmm. I B. B? So you started the numbering here, because you want to give the double bond the slowest possible number. So we don't want to start numbering from the left-hand side. And we don't start the numbering here, because we want the longest carbon chain. And so that would give us pentene. Mm -hmm. And it's E. Why is that? I mean, like E or Z, it's E. Right. Because the priorities are on the opposite sides. So right. B, is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Now, who's the higher priority on the number two carbon? Why? Because it's more primary. Is it H? Because, remember, you compare the atoms that are directly connected to the carbon here. Carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen. We should use the same priority system that we do for R and S. The same priority system as for R and S. Well, carbon beats hydrogen. But why does this top group have the higher priority? Because there's two carbons when there's only one. We can use the same uh, system. What you said didn't quite sound right there. So we want to use the same system as for R and S. These two carbons are tied, but this carbon is attached to three hydrogens, whereas this carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. So carbon beats hydrogen, and you're right that this top group is the higher priority. So it's a good habit to circle the higher priorities. Uh, how do you guys know that this is E then? Because E is on the opposite side. Right. How do you remember that? Because He's our teacher side. is French. So he says that if he were to say it, it would be Z same side. Right. So we know that Z is on the same side. <laughs> That's right. That's an excellent memory aid. That's right. So what does Z stand for? Uh, as your instructor says, Z stands for same side or cis. Yeah. Um, and then how do you know what the E stands for? Just opposite. <laughs> yeah. Or it's a little known fact. I don't know how they would say this in French. Maybe they would say this. Oh, E actually stands for epicent. Oh. All right. Of course, you only really need one memory aid, but I find it's fun to have two. All right. So Z means that the two high priorities are on the same side, and E means that the two high priorities are on opposite sides. Uh, a lot of people have a really hard time remembering which is Z and which is E, uh, but with this mnemonic, it becomes pretty easy to remember it. <laughs> This is an important thing to make sure you've got down. You're pretty sure to see exam problems on this on the test. For sure. Okay. So shall we move on to 28? Yes. Okay. So the right answer was B? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. expected to know. Oh, okay. Or I don't know where it comes from, but anyway, it's not something that you're expected to know anything about. Well, isn't it because the H, H's are going to be on the palladium, mm -hmm. on the platinum, and they're going to be on the same surface, so when they attach to it, they're going to attach to the same side? That doesn't quite answer the question, although that's a good start.
So what, what are they trying to ask us to explain? Why it attaches um, on why the methyl group is on the same side as the cyclohexane. Opposites. Cyclopropane, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. So basically what they told us here is they told us that when we hydrogenate this compound, this is the only product. What would the other possible product? The other possible product would be if the two hydrogens came in from in front. So they told us that when we hydrogenate this, the hydrogens only come in from behind, even though it seems like theoretically they should be able to come in from both sides, since after all, we're attacking something trigonal plane. so much staring bulk that if it's going to be in the front, is it going to be like not allow the hydrogens to attach properly? Yeah. Who, who's providing the steric hindrance in front? Um, the big cyclo yeah, this down here. So it looks like you analyzed that correctly. So again, the challenge here was to ask, why do the hydrogens only attack from behind and not from in front? Uh, and the answer is, there would be too much steric hindrance if they attack from in front, from the, uh, like you say, the cyclopropane ring. The cyclopropane ring is pointing out front, which means that the hydrogens will have an easier time coming in from behind. This is a pretty common type of situation to be asked about on an exam. You can see they can give you molecules you've never even heard of before, but you should still be able to use the principles from the class to, end, to explain the outcome. When you're trying to explain outcomes, there's two big considerations, sterics and electronics. The two big considerations for explaining outcomes are sterics and electronics. Electronics is like saying, what's the most stabilized carbocation, tertiary, say. And the other big issue is sterics. Well, there's no electronics here because there was no charges. So if we can't explain this with electronics, we have to explain it with the sterics. Why do the hydrogens come in from behind? Uh, because of the steric hindrance issues. This is maybe not what a lot of people would predict. A lot of people might say, gee, we'd rather have this methyl group pointing behind so that it doesn't get in the way of the cyclopropane. A lot of people might analyze this wrong because they might say, gee, the methyl group should be pointing behind so it doesn't get in the way of the cyclopropane. But what you should really worry about is which direction is easiest for the hydrogens to come in from which direction is easiest for the hydrogens to come in from. Well, the hydrogens want to come in from the less sterically hindered side. This is why when we said previously, we, we said that if you attack something trigonal planar, you get a maximum of two products. But you don't always get two products. Here's a case where, only, where we only get one. That make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question here is to show the major product. Both ages Good. Now, it's up to you whether you even show the hydrogens on this carbon because these would be just hidden hydrogens. In fact, you don't even have to show the hydrogen on this carbon. The only thing you've got to show is this. The one thing you've got to show is that the methyl should be on the wedge. It's, not, it's probably a good habit here to show all the hidden hydrogens. Just so you can see what's really going on. But uh, the answer key might just show that the methyl group is pointing in front. Oh, they show the hidden hydrogens. Okay. Any of those would be fine, as long as you show the methyl group pointing in front. So that would be our major product. So when we attack something trigonal planar, we usually expect two products, but maybe we won't get one of them or we'll get less of one of them if one of the faces is hindered. So here we have a hindered face. Mm -hmm. 